What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Kriegsfront Tactics, which is sort of like people wondering what would happen if like Armored Core or Front Mission or Mech Warrior happened in the middle of the Vietnam War, which is actually a really sick premise. It's not actually Vietnam, it's like a fantasized version of it. Uh, but fair warning, the developers actually paid for me to stream this game last week, but I liked it so much that I figured, you know, and the two things aren't really attached, I don't really do reviews over there, I just play games, I figured I would make a get video on the game because I actually ended up liking it a lot. So if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also take a look down there and you will find links to my Twitch stream and my Discord where you'll find a full playthrough of me playing through the actual prologue itself. But for right now, let's go ahead and dive on into the game. So as mentioned, what is Kriegsfront Tactics? Uh, Kriegsfront Tactics, can I just say, it's a really magical time to be a fan of anything that has to do with mechas. Like, there are a lot of mech things coming out lately, and I could not be more thankful about that. I'm a huge battle mech fan. Always have been, and I presume that I always will be as well. However, there seems to be like a really big drought in the world of games like this, where they just don't seem to come out altogether that often anymore. And I'm really, really glad that we're seeing like a big resurgence uh, to the mecha stuff that is releasing right now on Steam. But Kriegs Front Tactics is effectively... Ooh, big evade right there. We caught him with a little clipper. That sucks. I wasn't expecting the evade, but I probably should have been expecting the evade because he had 50% evasion. And so a smart person probably would have predicted that that was going to happen. But this game is effectively like Front Mission or like Mech Warrior. If you consider to yourself what Front Mission or Mech Warrior would actively look like if they took place inside like the Vietnam War or like in Cambodia or in some place like Laos in, in like the 60s or 70s. There's like this big empire, they're sort of like invading this jungle area and then through a series of events they end up getting cut off and you've got to manage your mechs as you go through this war-torn area and you start to kind of like find out all the things that are happening in country that maybe people don't really want you to know about. And the game is punchy, it hits hard, it's got a good soundtrack, it's got a lot of stuff going on with it. It's not complete yet. There's definitely like placeholders and stuff as of right now uh, in various areas. Like we aren't able to see the level up mechanics, we aren't able to see the RPG mechanics just yet. But I'll tell you this, the mech combat is pretty good. It's pretty cool. And so anyways, I was very impressed with this demo just because like they came out of the gate with everything exactly in the spots where you kind of want it to be for a prologue. Ty typically I'm used to games like this coming out and they're sort of like missing little aspects, they're missing little chunks of gameplay, uh, they're missing this, that, or the other, and then they're like, we'll fill it in a little bit later. But when it comes to the core gameplay mechanics of this title right now, the game is absolutely humming if you're into this kind of tactical combat, holding overwatches, firing guns at the enemy, you know, generally causing vehicular mayhem, and it's all packaged up in kind of like a really, really nice sort of aesthetic package that they've got going on. I don't know what visual filter thing they've got going on for like a lot of the, oh no, that's not good. We flanked out, boys. We flanked out real bad right now. Is he going to minigun me? He's going to try, but like, I'm going to dodge it. And so the mechanics on this one come together. You're not going to see a whole lot of things here that you haven't seen before in other mecha battling Battletech style titles, but you are going to see things that are done very, very well thus far and have been put together in a very satisfying way. So at its core, this is an AP based game. All of your characters have AP. That dictates what they can do. So my guys have 7 AP down here, and it is delineated in a very nice way uh, for the player because you know what APs are free for movement via the coloration and which ones will be used up by the bare minimum attack that you have on your mech. On top of that, this prologue gives you access to the mech builder as well, like parts will drop off of enemies and whatnot, and then you can equip those as you see fit. He's got 50% evasion. That might be a bad idea. He's got an overwatch on me right now. What can I do here? So that guy's right there. That guy's got, like, his fist going on. Okay, so we're going to have to make some moves here, but they've got me covered pretty solidly by overwatches at the moment. So movement is not going to be incredibly effective. That guy's got a giant drill, which is a little bit horrifying. Let's move my shotgunner up, and we'll see if we can do something about this drill guy over here. 
boom, baby. Time to go to sleep. Kill the meat, save the metal. Same business as in Mech Warrior, same business as in Battletech. Alright, so that's one guy that's been taken care of. He's ever so slightly inside that Overwatch range, but I think he can move over to here. I don't know if that'll get rid of the enemy's evasion chance. Indeed, it did. So we can actually get rid of his gun right there. So we can use kind of like Phoenix Point style controls to try to target specific spots on the enemy mech so that we can knock them off. I haven't verified it yet, but it does seem like you occasionally recover the parts that you're knocking off of the enemy as well. You never want to leave your back exposed in this game uh, because if your back is exposed, the enemy has a 100% chance to hit you. And getting hit by a point blank 100% shot is really, really bad. You should probably seek out to avoid eating one of those to the face. He no longer has a gun, so I don't know how he's holding an overwatch right now, but let's just get him out from in between our cheeks with some carefully applied small arms fire. There we go. Uh, the environments are fully destructible inside of this title, so if I wanted to, I could use daisy cutters to chop down the forest over here, to chop down the jungle. Uh, you can, you know, the, I, you can tell they're setting up sort of this idea of, like, smoke screens, and it captures the feeling of jungle fighting very, very well, because inside of jungles, you can only see one tile around you, and so when fights get into the jungles, dude, they get really, really, really unpredictable. You just never know what's gonna happen once a fight carries over into the jungle. Uh, what do I have going on here? So that guy's right there. Technically, I could kind of, like, get in behind him and machine gun him. Yeah, you slide over here and see if you can machine gun him to his back. There's no attacks of opportunity or anything, I don't think. Ooh, they have a sniper back there. Yeah, this guy is gifting his line of sight to an artillery sniper back over there. Oh, that's super bad. So he's taking a shot from this berm over here. We need to kill this guy about as soon as possible because we need his line of sight to disappear. We got really lucky right there and we dodged the shot as we were moving. But this is not going to work out for us long term. So we're in behind him. Go ahead and mag dump him. Okay, I'll take that. That's not bad. That's like an acceptable. Uh, your characters get counterattacks, by the way, whenever they attack inside of range. And so we got to watch out for that. Uh, since we know there's a sniper, face that way so you're at least getting some kind of dodge. And, like, I don't know exactly what I want to do about this guy. Unfortunately, they got around us in a bad way using the forest. I can do a snapshot right here. There's no evasion. But I might hit my own guy. I don't know if it penetrates. Uh, bullets in this game have a physical presence, meaning that if I was taking a machine gun and shooting at this guy right here, any bullet that missed, it carries on until it leaves the map, and so it can hit my own character. And these are things that you actively have to think about. I learned this all the hard way while I was playing the prologue through the first time. Uh, over here, let's get on the back end of this hill, maybe? I don't like the idea of sniper fire coming through the jungle when I can't see it. So let's get back on this side right here and kind of use it as like a reverse hill defense. Uh, minigun's gonna mag dump us. And he did make his shot. Uh, all damage in this game is carried through. Uh, you keep it permanently. So you have to find specific repair bays that are limited in numbers in order to fix up your mechs. And so it gives it kind of a junker feeling, I guess is the way that I would describe it. In the respect that your mechs are not always going to be optimally equipped for what you're trying to do. Uh, you are frequently going to be swapping out parts that are at least functional in order to continue your mission chase down the mountain. Uh, what happened to his arm? Yeah, I was going to say, they show battle damage, too. When their armor gets destroyed, it'll actually just show frame over here. And when the armor's taken, like, half HP from various weapons, it gets kind of burned out and charcoaly. Lots of good little visual details here to keep in mind. I'm worried about fighting from this hilltop. I really don't want to do it. Does this guy have dodge on us right here? Like, if I take, like, an aim shot? He's got zero evasion. Okay, put him to sleep. There it is. Boom. Headshot. Daisy Von Vosch took care of it. Got us covered. 
Alright, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move very, very carefully because we know that sniper is over here, but we don't know exactly where he's at. And there's also four more enemies that we've got to engage with as per the mission objectives up here. And so four enemies is more than enough to do a lot of damage if we don't react quickly to them. And so we don't want to overcommit ourselves or get ourselves into trouble here. Let's get everybody back into formation. We'll rendezvous around this village. We'll kind of cut left. And we'll see what happens here. I'm assuming this guy does not have line of sight. But it does feel like kind of a maniac play. If you know a sniper is watching this valley right here to go through the valley. So we may be better off sort of cutting through the trees. But I don't want to split my force. That's what I would prefer not to do. What are we looking at over here? Okay, so you give me like advanced overwatch over the jungle right there. I mean, maybe we should cut through the jungle. That sniper's got me feeling bad feelings. I also need to get everybody reloaded. That thing looks like a grenade launcher, but it's a shotgun, in case you were wondering. Uh, let's get everybody behind cover, though, just in case. And then we'll just set up, like, some concentric overwatches here in case anybody tries to run through the brush in order to find us. I do hear movement, so they're looking for us right now. Uh, let's take a pass turn, and I'm going to reload everybody. Okay, so after passing a couple of turns here, now it's time for us to push through the brush. This is where things are going to get sketchy, and there's just not much you can do about it. I'll probably send up my shotgunner first, largely due to the fact that he has epaulettes. Uh, so he's got a lot more armor than everybody else. And so we'll send up the shotgunner and see if he can establish visual contact with anything. We now know that it's reasonably safe at least to move up to that point. So let's just keep our overwatches running. We don't want to get too wild and crazy out here. Move around the jungle for me. And really, there is a sense of stakes to this game. Not in terms of the food. Maybe I'm just hungry. I don't know. A delicious steak. You know how you're getting older? I know that I'm getting older because my Reddit search history is entirely like slash R steak and like slash R plumbing. <laughs> And like slash R like handyman. That's how you know you're getting older is that like all of the things that used to populate the list of things on Reddit that you would browse through that were mostly about fun and levity, those slowly disappear and it just turns into like a business operation. But this game does have a wonderful sense of stake to it. And the reason why it has a wonderful sense of stake is precisely due to the fact that any damage that you take is permanent. You can't like fix that without having a specialized facility and so you tend to have to play very very carefully and mistakes are punished heavily in this game like if the enemy catches you with your pants down you're about to have a real real bad time my amigo it's gonna be awful uh, it looks like the enemy's not patrolling in this area right now this is gonna be a really good opportunity for us to advance and establish control of this area via overwatches so let's just do that However, the sniper doesn't have line of sight of us on that hill right there. Part of me just wants to rush him. I could also blind fire him with missiles. Because I've got a pretty good idea where he's at. He's on like one of these four cells from the playback of where the shot was. So technically I could try to blind fire him out. We are the Empire in this game. So we have the best equipment, the coolest stuff. Uh, and we're going up against ragtag guys that are effectively using farming equipment that has been converted into mechs. At least for now. But uh, we should have a significant firepower advantage in engaging with these guys. Let's just rush it, dude. We're going to rush the sniper. It might be a bad choice, but I'm going to do it anyways. Where's the sniper at? The sniper's right there. Okay, face the sniper. This is really going to hurt for you on this turn. You're going to hate it. Oh, you dodged it. Nice, dude. You only took a little scuffy to the chest chassis. And you get a counterattack. Light him up. We need this guy out from behind us. Okay, it wasn't a killing shot, but it did do quite a bit of damage. If you were looking at the body parts layout right here, the blue bar is your HP. Once that's gone, the body part is destroyed. If your legs come off, you no longer get evasion. Uh, you just don't get to have that. Uh, if your arms come off, you obviously lose access to the weapon that is mounted on that arm. And then if your body goes down, you are just dead. The yellow meters down here are the amount of armor that you have left and the mitigation that it's providing shot by shot. Some enemies use small arms fire that is not capable 
of penetrating through your armor, so it'll just dink the armor until it gets down to, like, halfway, and eventually that small arms fire from, like, you know, a Mac 11 or whatever will eventually sneak through, but it takes a really, really long time. Other things like assault rifles, miniguns, like 7mm cannons, stuff like that, uh, they tend to hurt a lot, even if you have armor, and so they're going to penetrate and deal damage. There's one more kill right there. You love to see it. And then that's two AP to go over to there. All right, let's see if we can get line of sight on these dorks over here. There's three of them running around somewhere, but I can't seem to find them. Let's set up overwatches first before we go into that area, because this game is probably going to annoy XCOM purists. But the enemy not only gets a scramble turn when you uncover them, if you don't know what a scramble turn is, it means the enemy, when you uncover them in previously occluded environments, they get to run to cover for free. Not only do they get that in this game, they also get a free overwatch from that position. And so, like, when triggering patrols, you should really, really, really be careful because they have a lot of things in their favor that can just make your life an unholy nightmare if you pop them at the wrong time. So if you're wondering why I'm playing very, very cautiously, it's because, specifically, uh, this game punishes mistakes very heavily, and the enemy has a lot of advantages when you uncover them. So realistically, you kind of want to use concentric overwatches to bait them, to scramble into your overwatches and get some preliminary damage off. Otherwise, things don't really work out. Let's move him out to here see what we see looks like this hill is causing problems you move up to the forest right there all right i set the trap let's see if we can spring it they got to be right back and around this corner that's what it's got to be and there they are i was absolutely correct uh, do i have enough left for a missile launcher i do have enough left for a missile launcher but let's kind of consider that action for a second before we do it What's my range looking like over here for targeting them? If I move up by three, maybe I can get them with the blooper. I can get them with the blooper from here. All right, get them with the daisy cutters, baby. Okay, trees ate up a lot of that bombardment right there, and I think we destroyed someone's sacred site. We came up behind them so they didn't trigger. That's kind of good. I don't know precisely how this is going to play. But he got his shield up, which kind of sucks. The good news here is I've got a little bit of adaptability on this side. Nothing too crazy. But he's got no dodge chance right there. And I think we can light him up. Uh, that red ring right there is actively where the spread of the entire attack is going to go. So we're going to center that right there. We did not secure the kill. I was hoping we'd get the kill from the preview, but we didn't get the kill. Okay. I mean, he can take a shot from right there, but why would you? You know what I mean? Like, this guy over here also has clover bombs that we can fire and a Soviet missile. Let's get him out of our booty cheeks. Get him with the rocket. That overwatch is kind of affecting my ability to maneuver right now, and I'd rather have it on out of the way. But this is one of those titles that I've really enjoyed pretty much every aspect of it. It's taken me back to my childhood playing like Front Mission 1, 2, and 3 on the Super Nintendo and all of those systems. We do have an aim shot right here, but I don't know how it's going to go. He has no evasion because it's such a long shot. Oh, nice! You took off his shield arm! I'll take that, actually. That frees up a number of tactical options. That's really good for us. So now what I would prefer to do is, like, what's our shot looking like from right there? 25% chance of evasion? I'm not positive that I'm going to be able to get this guy on this turn. He's going to have dodge, kind of, no matter what I do. How's that hill line look right there, too? Can I make a shot from there? So we have, like, two options right here. I can try to maneuver, and he'll get more dodge, less chance of me hitting him. Or I can run up next to him. I can put the Mossberg to the side of his head. He'll have a 25% dodge chance, but if it doesn't kill him, he gets a counterattack, and then he gets another attack right after that. 
So sort of risky plays here for right now. I'm gonna go for a safer play. Okay, there's another shooter over there. Apparently I don't know how to count. Oh yeah, there he is right there. There's our guy. The game is full of little details too, like when one mech walks through a cell that's already occupied by another allied mech, the allied mech kind of steps to the side. Like, you know that thing you do when you're on like the bus or the train and somebody like has to get past you, you're like, oop, and you got to decide whether you want to give them the balls or the butt. Uh, exactly, that's what the mechs do. Maybe I'll go with an Overwatch instead. Overwatch is safer because it's a guaranteed hit. You guys hang tight. We'll get everybody buckled in. Overwatch. Good shot right there. Knocked off his other arm, which means he can only body slam now. Oh, he's got a tomahawk. Never mind, but we dodged it. He's got a tomahawk, but we dodged it. It worked out. He's got himself like a bearded battle axe or something. Wow, it's a cold world. He just machine gunned his friend to try to hit us. Dude. It's rotten out there. Ain't no enemies like friends, man. All right. Uh, can I get line of sight on this dude, please? I need, I, need, I need line of sight on this guy, like, right now. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. We moved to the perfect spot. No evasion. Kill him off. That's what I'm talking about, and we got ourselves mission complete. Uh, from what I've played so far, everything here is really, really good. They've put out about a two-hour prologue with no RPG mechanics in it yet, so there are little placeholders where when you fire certain weapons, you'll see a thing pop up that says XP plus zero. So, like, the beginnings of the system that's tracking the weapons that various pilots are using is on its way up for some kind of affinity system or something like that, but I don't know what the progression is going to look like outside of the mech building that's available. Uh, we got the Arnie, and we got two Arnie. Arms. That's good because I want to equip that Arnie. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this is the overworld map. You basically have all the time in the world to wander around the map and take objectives as you please. Right now we're trying to rendezvous with our squad lead who mysteriously vanished during a training exercise. But uh, you can wander around. There's no time limit on any of this and each location has good writing. Uh, it tends to have good dialogue. The characters uh, chattering with one another. It's all fully voiced and it's all done very, very well. But we can go into the garage and we can actually slap on some of those parts because I'm willing to bet that we've probably got a couple of parts that are beat up here. And so it looks like with those Vanguard arms, we have the Anoa, which has lower armor and lower HP. So we kind of want to use these as holdouts. Uh, your mech has arm slots, it has body slots, and it has leg slots. Do with them what you desire to do. Can I, like, dual-wield machine guns? I'm curious about that. Hold on, I got an idea here. Let me go back to, where's my mech that has that stupid hammer? I'm not a big fan of the melee weapons so far. Like, they're consistent armor-piercing damage, but it's too low to really, like, do anything with. And so, like, I've been favoring guns very, very heavily. Uh, let's go with, instead of this, you equip the Arnie, because somebody's got to have a minigun in here, right? Like, what good is a military squad without a minigun? Every video game is better with a minigun. There's two types of video games in this world. Games with miniguns and games without miniguns. Those are the only two types. And one of them is objectively better than the other. Oh, yeah. I can, uh... I can, I can dual wield machine guns. I wonder if he can fire them both at the same time, though. Like, is that even a thing that I can do? I wonder. Because if I can't point both of them at the enemy under withering fire, mag dump both of them like, ah, while my cockpit catches on fire and I sacrifice myself to save the team and everybody's like, he wanted this, let's go! He made his choice! You know, like, that's that's one of those things that, like, I really want to be in that moment in, like, a movie. Like, you know the guy from The Matrix that, like, has him load out his mech one last time as he fires into just innumerable squiddies and gets torn to pieces and he tells the kid to go? Like, that's the moment that I want for one of my characters so that he can go down a legend. So I'll throw that on in there. I do have one repair left over here. Uh, I've already searched one village. That's what that battle that you saw was. But we need to search two more villages. There are other optional areas around the map. I would recommend kind of exploring around, but don't don't mess with level 10 mechs. That's a mistake. Level 10 mechs are going to get awfully stingy in my experience. So, like, I'd rather not play around with that noise. What's this patrol doing over here? He's right there. Can I shoot that gap? Looks like he was checking something over there. What do we have going on? I don't want to get caught up, but let's get into the woods so that we're obfuscated.
It looks like deep inside the woods, we've got ourselves a point of interest. The mission manual indicates the location of a UOC safe house that's deep in the Nusenian wilderness. Uh, we will check out the safe house. Recognizing that the supplies left behind could aid the mission, we decided to access the cache. The hut appeared unassuming, reminiscent of a peasant house we frequently encountered in the villages. Inside, excessive tropical moisture left the atmosphere slightly damp. Upon arrival, we found a bulletproof safe under a creaky bed, slightly ajar, whatever was in it. Somebody already claimed it for themselves. Sergeant Sterveling had been studying a stack of papers retrieved from Jaws. Uh, wordlessly, he returned them to the folder as we prepared to leave. Okay, is there anything else back out this way, or is that just like the edge of the map? All right, sounds like a plan. Let's go check this other village over here and see what we've got going on. We have a level 5 patrol in between us and where we're trying to go. Okay. What's this little location? The campsite is hidden in a clearing surrounded by towering trees and a cacophony of wildlife. Yeah, take some rest. That's fine. I don't want to light a fire, though, with enemies right there. That just seems like a terrible idea. So we'll just ignore that for right now. One of our other objectives is on this side. What's going on with this place? This village likely housed no more than a few dozen families, so small and secluded that it barely registered on our map. Seeing its inhabitants was a relief compared to the burning, empty houses we had c encountered. The villagers allowed us to rest under a pavilion which served as their gathering hall. A shy little girl gave us glasses of fresh water. Once the feverish heat of the day subsided from the back of our necks, we climbed into our Krieger and resumed the march. Okay, that only leaves one location left to grab, but I'm really happy with this prologue. I highly suggest that if you're into anything that has to do with mechas, mech building, I get to custom paint all of my mechs. It has a custom painting tool that you can play around with to add decals and, like, you know, put Born to Die with, like, a skull with, like, a helmet and, like, a cigar on the side of one of them. All of those Vietnam sort of full metal jacket tropes are inside of here. You're definitely going to run into them. But I was very impressed by this demo. I liked it a lot. Full disclosure, the developers uh, paid me to stream the game a couple of days ago, but it was one of those days where it was light work, because sometimes when you're paid to stream a thing, the two hours can really drag if the game sucks. Uh, but this game, I completely and totally lost track of time, and by the time it was over, I was like, oh, I guess the stream is, I guess the sponsor stream is done. And so, I really, really liked it independent of that. I'm not on the contract anymore, but... But I am looking forward to this title as a Front Mission fan, as someone that's really, really into Front Mission and Battletech and stuff like that. I think they've struck a very nice balance between Eastern and Western Mecha. They've got it in a very nice place where everything feels weighty, everything feels chuggy, everything feels good. But at the same time, you can tell that these mechs can actively move if they want to. Or they can hold a position very, very well, too. And so I've been happy so far with what these have shown off. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile that found what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Krieg's Front Tactics. Tomorrow, we'll be checking out something else. Sarge, see you next time.